OK, let's talk about these questions. Question one. Uh, why use 2D animation instead of CGI or live action? So here's the thing. This question originally went to group two, but during the discussion, group two got combined with group one. So there's no group talking about this question. Um, so it's my question. Why 2D instead of 3D? Uh, well, we, when we talked about animation uh, a few weeks ago, I mentioned that 3D animation or CGI is very similar to live action. The difference is the physics engine. The rules of physics can be changed, but once you set the new rules, the computer program will follow those rules in a very strict way. Just like in real life, we have to follow the rules of physics. But this film has so many ideas that break rules of physics. If you think about the hand, there are so many things that the hand does that the, the rules of physics relating to the hand don't make sense. Right? At one point, it's crawling. At the other point, it can stand. In the middle, it, it can... Uh, in the middle, it's afraid of drowning in the river, but then it can sink to the bottom of the bathtub. At one point, it's flying. Doesn't make sense. So from a technical perspective, it would be very hard to uh, make this movie using CGI uh, because the rules would be changing across many different scenes. Uh, and we don't even have to go into why is it not live action. It's even more complicated if you try to combine CGI with live action, live actors. So 2D is the easiest way to make this movie. But in terms of the aesthetics, the feeling, um, this was what group two was uh, talking to me about before they got swallowed by group one. Um, they said that this movie is maybe trying to give a uh, more uh, intimate, hand-drawn kind of feeling. It's uh, it's not like we're watching like uh, superheroes fighting bad guys. It's not a, that is not a part of our life. By using hand drawn 2D animation, it feels like something we are more familiar with. We are e uh, more easier. It's easier for us to connect with the emotions. Um, right when you see this kind of animation, you you start thinking of other movies using similar styles of animation. A lot of these have to do uh, come from our childhood memories. And so this style um, has a closer connection with our feelings. Um, so even though the hand, uh, I don't think the hand can die, right? What would that mean for the hand to die? And yet so many scenes when the hand is in danger, we feel that danger. Even though if you think about it, nothing bad will really happen to the hand. Um, right, so that's question one. Uh, and um, also, if you noticed, in the climax of the movie, when Naufel actually cuts off his hand, the image turns to black and white. Right. Um, it's one way to... It, it gives us it gives us a different kind of shock. If the image did not change, it would be the shock of seeing somebody cut off his hand. But when the color uh, disappears and the image changes, it replaces one kind of shock with another kind of shock. So when we're watching, we still know that something uh, sudden and dangerous is happening, but it doesn't hit us in the same way. And if the movie was made using CGI or live action, it would be harder to do that. There are also just lots of beautiful, beautiful images in this movie. OK, question two, why isn't now fell white? Uh, I talked with group, I think it was six. Five, I talked with group five uh, about this question, um, and they believe that it's it's part of uh, Naufel's life story that 
he lives in a society where he doesn't feel like he belongs. Uh, group five was talking about um, black people in the US. In this movie, it was made in France and Naufel is Arabic. Um, France has a very complicated historical relation with uh, Arab culture, especially Algeria, Argelia, which used to be a French colony. Uh, the Algerian war between France and uh, later the independent country of Algeria was full of uh, violence and terrorism. The French government even today uh, still has not apologized for some of the things it has done to Algeria. So when the story has now fell as an Arabic person, a lot of that history comes with his character. So, for example, when he's delivering pizzas, the film uh, tries to tell us that uh, nobody likes him because he does a bad job. But we also can't help thinking whether the reaction of his boss and maybe some of his customers is also uh, due to racism. For example, uh, when his scooter is hit by the car, right? The dude first fixes his car mirror, asks him, are you OK? And then just drives off. Yes, he's an asshole, but it could also be somewhat racist. So. Um, if the story, and we'll come back to the big idea of this movie in question five, but if the big idea of the movie is related to how Naufel doesn't fit into this society, then making him an Arabic person helps to express that idea. There's also a small irony um, when he first hears Gabrielle's voice, he thinks that her name is Mrs. Martinez, right? Martinez is also not a white name. It's a Latin name. So that first connection is also related to the irony of race. At first, maybe he thinks that uh, she's also a minority. Maybe she also knows what it's like to live in a racist society. But no, it turns out she's white. Uh, and there's also something we can talk about related to the romance between an Arabic man and a, and a white girl. Um, I don't want to talk about that right now, but it's it can be very complicated. OK, question three. Would the film be different if the protagonist were a girl? If yes, how? If no, why not? Did any group take this question? No, OK, cool. I get two questions today. Uh, OK, so a lot of the movie is uh, about the romance between Naufel and Gabrielle, uh, especially the very shy, very awkward, kind of creepy way that he tries to uh, pursue her. Um, would it work if the gender was reversed and the protagonist was a girl who falls in love with a guy? I think you could still tell that story, but a lot of the details would have to be handled differently. There's a cultural idea of the male loner, like the the man who's on his own, who doesn't connect with other people. Uh, he feels that burden to try to be successful in life and in society. Um, and of course, uh, women can also have the same feelings, but the history, the cultural history uh, of that kind of life story is a bit different uh, for women. Uh, as we all know, women gained uh, independent rights and financial independence later in history, uh, even into the 20th century. So if the same or similar story were told with the reverse gender, I think the pressure on the protagonist would be less about trying to be successful in life and would probably be more related to trying to uh, escape family pressure or society's uh, moral pressure expectations about what a girl or a woman should do or be like in society. Maybe. 
Um, so the story we have, everything happens to make Naufel alone, right? His parents die, his uncle doesn't care about him. Um, but if the protagonist were a girl, maybe it would be in a large family and people would have many expectations of her and all of the uh, adventure and the plot that happens might be uh, because she's trying to escape that kind of pressure. Maybe, again, maybe. Okay, question four. Uh, why is the camera work sometimes weird even when we're not focusing on the hand? So uh, group three took this question and they give the example of, uh, I think you said when he's at the, he's, he's um, going on the airplane, right? And so like the, it has the tag that says he's a child flyer. Um, and they noticed that in that scene, there is a shot from very high that makes him look very small. Um, and yes, that kind of angle is designed to express loneliness and a loss of control and sadness, kind of negative emotions. Um, so from that example, we can see that um, even when we're only looking at now fell the person and not the hand, um, the camera also does a lot of work in making us feel his loneliness. But also, we uh, we also get camera angles that look up. For example, looking up at the sky or looking out across the city. And these shots uh, also tell us about how he feels in that moment. And in that moment, he feels hopeful. He feels like there's possibility. Um, even if it's not a possibility that he can have right now. He feels like maybe in the future there might be more possibilities for him. Um, so yes, he feels alone a lot of the time, but he also imagines and hopes that in the future maybe things can improve. Something like that. And question five, you guys love this question. Is it because it's the shortest question? How would you explain the ending? So a lot of groups chose this one. And uh, in when I was talking with you guys, I heard a uh, lot of similar answers. Most of you said that the ending where like he jumps to the crane is Nafel trying to escape his fate, trying to change his life. Um, and, you know, I think that makes sense. Uh, when he is about to confess his love for Gabriel, he says a lot of stuff about escaping fate, doing something surprising. And then when she asks him, OK, what happens next? Uh, he says, you just keep on running to escape fate. Um, so first of all, assuming that he was being sincere and he's not just trying to win the girl. Maybe he was trying to win the girl. Maybe he's both, right? Uh, maybe he does think about these ideas, but he says them to her to try to impress her. So these two goals could uh, be valid at the same time. So let's say he's serious. So the first half of that, right, you have to do something surprising to escape your fate would explain why he jumps. And he also mentions that as an example. What if you change direction, you jump on the crane? At the second half, you have to keep on running would kind of uh, predict what might happen next. Some groups mentioned that he hopes this could give a new direction to his life. And that would only be true if he does keep on running and he does follow this new direction. Um, one group mentioned, so this is the symbolic level, um, but if we go back to the specific level of the story, uh, why does he jump? One group mentioned that at that point in the film, he had nothing to lose. His family, uh, his parents were dead, his surviving family doesn't care about him. He thinks that he has lost his love. 
he lost his hand. He can't do his work because he lost his hand. Seems like he doesn't have anything worth living for. And so to this group, I asked, OK, if that's true, why did he jump? Why did he try to jump over? Why didn't he just kill himself? Uh, and after thinking about it, this group said maybe because he was giving himself one last chance. Maybe he was thinking I have nothing to lose, but if I make it, that means that there's still something waiting for me in the future. And he makes it right. That's why he's so happy. Um, and then the last part of this question is uh, Gabrielle. We've been talking about why does Naufel jump? What is he thinking? What is the meaning? But why is Gabrielle also part of this ending? It happens in two times at this at, at once, right? We see Gabrielle discovering the tape, and then we see what Naufel did to create that sound. So why is Gabrielle part of this ending? Um, and uh, I talked about this with some groups, and the answer I heard was that um, we mentioned some of the bad things that has happened to him. His parents are dead. They're not coming back. His surviving family doesn't love him. They're not going to change their mind. His, he lost his hand. It's not coming. Uh, it did come back, but it's not coming back to his body. The one thing that could change is his relationship with Gabrielle. Uh, and so maybe this is what the film is trying to, the, the kind of story that the film is trying to tell. When Gabrielle hears that recording and she realizes what Naufel has done, according to this group, I think it was group six, uh, according to this group, maybe it was group seven, sorry. But according to this group, um, it shows that when Naufel was first talking about fate with Gabrielle, she got angry, right? She thought that he was bullshitting her and just trying to have sex with her. But the fact that he actually does jump. And uh, yeah, the fact that he does jump maybe shows Gabrielle that he was serious. Uh, he really does um, love her. He really does mean all the things that he says. Maybe it would make Gabrielle reconsider their relationship. Uh, and if in this interpretation, now Fell's hand also helps, uh, right? Because the hand builds the igloo in the medicine cabinet, right? She opens the door, she sees the igloo. Um, so the hand is trying to make Gabrielle think that uh, now Fell made this small igloo. Because the, the big igloo made of wood, Gabrielle might think, uh, Naufel made that only to impress her. But if he makes a small igloo for himself, that means that it's not about her or it's not just about her. He really does care about these ideas and he is being sincere. So his hand is also helping Naufel uh, rekindle his relationship with Gabrielle, I think. Also, you know, that's a very cool way to tell Gabrielle you should go check the igloo on the roof. Uh, and one last part to this question. I know I said one last part, but like there's another last part uh, to this question. I asked uh, these groups, what kind of fate is Naufel trying to escape? And most uh, groups said it's a kind of tragedy, right? All of these bad things happening in his life. I think we can. Uh, be a bit more detailed. What kind of tragedy? Um, when his parents die, uh, the way that it happens, one group said this, maybe makes Naufel think that he is responsible. Maybe Naufel thinks he distracted his dad, so his dad didn't see the animal and they got into a car crash. Uh, of course, that's not necessarily true, right? There could have been many other reasons. Maybe uh, even if the dad did see the animal, he couldn't avoid it. Uh, so it's not mostly Naufel's fault. What about the other parts? Uh, his uncle and brother don't re really care about him. Uh, again, the idea that he doesn't fit in with this part of his family. 
uh, he loses his hand because he, first of all, he's drunk or he has a hangover. And he has a hangover because he was drinking last night. He was drinking last night because uh, he screwed up with Gabrielle and she left him. And he screwed up with Gabrielle because he thought that he was doing something beautiful. It turns out it was something creepy. So again, he doesn't really fit in with the ideas of society around him. Uh, and also, throughout the movie, we have seen that Naofel is kind of clumsy. Right? He knocks things over. He puts his hand on the paint. Um, when he was delivering pizzas, I was very worried for him because I knew he was a clumsy person. Um, so that's part of why he lost his hand also, because he was so focused on the fly, he didn't pay attention to his hand. And that's also partly because he's kind of clumsy. Um, so if we put all of these together, the idea that I get is that his tragedy comes from... Um, we can say this in two ways. He doesn't fit in with the society around him, or he doesn't fit in with the time around him. He's always doing... Being clumsy is kind of like being at the wrong time. Um, or like when, when he's talking to his father in the car, that's also a timing issue. So if we think about it this way, then when he jumps to the crane at the end, and he makes it, he makes the jump. That moment, he fits in with uh, his environment. He got the right timing. Uh, he's not clumsy at that moment. That's basically the one moment in the whole movie where everything goes perfectly for him. And so it's a very good beginning. In English, we say it's an auspicious beginning to the rest of his life and maybe to his new relationship with Gabrielle. Okay, do you have questions? Cool, so as I mentioned, next week we're going to watch a very long movie, and we will, we will discuss that movie in week eight. After week eight, uh, sorry, after discussing, um, I will introduce the midterm exam. Um, Okay, so for the rest of today, if you haven't signed in, please come sign in. And we still have some time. I encourage you to use this time to discuss your final project with your group members.